Good day, readers, and welcome to the reading workshop lesson for Tuesday, November 10th, 2020. Today we are going to be talking about visualization. The materials you will need today are a pencil, your reading journal, and your my book. Our, if you do not have these materials, go ahead and press pause, collect your materials, and then come back to press play. All right, now that you're back, let's go over our objectives. I will review how readers visualize. We will recognize sensory images and words in the text. You will use your visualization skills to express your understanding of the text. Yesterday, we started reading a historical fiction title titled A Pioneer Stampler by Barbara Greenwood. We talked about how readers visualize and understand what life was like back then for the pioneers. As you read historical fiction text, I want you to remember that good readers try to visualize or create pictures in their mind to help them understand details about what life was like at a time in history. When readers visualize, they use information from all five senses to help them create pictures in their minds. You can use the words the author is using. You can use the words the author is writing to tell to see what the author is describing in your mind. When you read, you can think, "What could I smell?" The words can appear appeal to your hearing, your hearing sense as well. If a writer writes the word "beep beep," you may hear a car horn or something similar. When reading details in a text. There might be words that appeal to your sense of taste, like when an author describes food or a bitter taste. An author could also use words that describe texture. Words like soft, rough, or hard, or brittle come to mind. These words appeal to your sense of touch and what you may feel when you think about these words. You must pay close attention because the author can use illustrations to appeal to your senses as well. Today, I want you to specifically, I want to specifically show you how to use visualization to go deeper into the text. I want you to follow along as I read some of the text. The Robertsons are a pioneering family living on a backwoods farm in 1840. Although the Robertsons are a fictional family, their struggle to clear the forest, to plant, to harvest, and to make a good life for themselves echoes the efforts of our early settlers who worked hard to build a home, a community, and a country. The Robertsons, like real settlers, live by this motto, eat it up, wear it out, make it do, or go without. The Robertson children learn early that many hands make light work, and that it's best to make hay while the sun shines. But life isn't all chores and making do. Maple sugar frolics and harvest suppers, husking bees and barn dances, the birth of lambs and the search for a honey tree brighten the days as the seasons pass from winter to spring, from summer to fall. As I read, I will use the illustrations on this page and others to help me visualize or make images in my mind. When I look at this illustration of the Robertson family, I see that it's almost like a family photograph. It gives me an idea of how each of the characters looks, how many people there are in the family, and about how old the people are. These details will help me visualize the family members as I read on. Follow along as I continue to read. Harvesting the crops. Stand up properly, Meg said. You can't carry all water all hunched over like that. Willie wiggled his shoulders to make the yoke sit more comfortably, then straightened up. The weight of the buckets made the wood bite into the back of his neck. It hurts, he complained. Stop fidgeting. Meg moved the yoke slightly, and the pressure ceased. You'll be fine. It's a lot easier than lugging a bucket by hand, and you won't lose nearly so much water. Off you go. 
women will be dying of thirst. Carrying water out to the hayfield had always been Meg's or George's job. This year, Paul wanted George's help with the harvesting, and Ma had decided that Willie and Sarah were big enough to carry water. Stupid buckets, Willie grumbled to himself as he trudged off. I want to do real work, like George. That reminded him of George sitting at the grindstone last evening, making me turn the handle while he sharpened the sickle. He thinks he's so important just because Paul's letting him cut the hay this year. The sun beat down from a blue sky. Paul had been right about the weather. Listen to the cicadas thing, he said the night before. We'll have good hay and weather tomorrow. When I read parag when I read, I want you to notice and remember that authors use sensory images or words that appeal to the five senses to help readers visualize. As I'm reading, I want you to highlight the words that help you or the sensory image sensory words that help you in paragraphs 11 and 12. Follow along and highlight those words that you find as I read. Willie rested his hands on the bucket handles to keep them from swinging and arched his back against the weight. Across the fields, he could see Paul, one of the big Simpson boys who'd been hired for the summer. They swayed back and forth and they swung the long handled sides to cut the hay. George was bent over using the short handled sickle trim to trim around a tree stump. Every so often, Paul stopped and ran a whetstone over his scythe blade. Willie liked the raspy zroop of the whetstone, sharpening the blade. The stubble of cut grass prickled Willie's bare feet across the, as he crossed the field. The soles of his feet were toughened from months of running barefoot, but with the buckets dragging him down, the stubble felt sharp. He was anxious about tripping over an upthrust stone and spilling the water or, worse still, stepping on a snake. With luck, the snakes would all be gone. Just yesterday, he and George had been out with the sticks, beating the field to scare away snakes and families of skunks and rabbits. The last thing I want, Paul had said, is animals exploding out of the grass in front of me when I swing, I'm swinging a scythe like, a, like to cut a foot off. All right, did you find some words to highlight? I hope so. Some of the words that I found were zroop, stubble, and sharp. These are very good sensory words that made me create images in my own mind or hear the zroop of the whetstone. The stubble of the grass really made me feel as if I could feel that grass on my feet. I'm going to go ahead and go forward to page 291. Okay, I want you to follow along as I read. Hey up, Willie shouted, and the oxen started a steady plod. Low clouds scudded in, darker with each second. Maul and Meg frantically raked windrows into small hayhawks. In the piles, at least the bottommost stacks, stalks would stay dry. Willie concentrated on the sledge. Gee, Buck, gee, Bright, he shouted to steer the oxen around the root stumps. As the sky grew darker, he prodded the animals with the goad. Move, move, he urged them. The oxen blew through their nostrils and plodded, plodded steadily ahead. Never such a stubborn beast as an ox, his father always said. When I read paragraph 21, I visualize this scene. I can see Willie calling out to the oxen to move in my mind. I can see the clouds building and everyone working as fast as they can to try to save the hay. Willie is getting frustrated and prods the oxen to move faster and I can see it. Visualizing this, helps me understand and enjoy the scene because it makes it seem like I'm right there watching it as it's happening. It makes it almost like a real experience.
To, now it's your turn. I want you to read paragraph 33 on page 294 in the text. Then visualize the events that are happening as you're reading. How does visualizing this scene help you understand? What does visualizing this scene help you to understand about the people? Read paragraph 33 and visualize what you're reading. Then answer this question in your reading journal. Remember readers, today and every day when you read, take time to visualize to help you go deeper into the text and really try to see what is going on as you read.